Uh, my name is Dave Devore, and I'm the director of tennis at Dunaway Country Club, which is not too far from here. And um, I want to thank you all for hanging in here with us. Uh, I'm bringing you home. This is the last 15 minutes, so I appreciate everybody uh, being so attentive. Um, I've been doing this for a long time, and uh, I don't even want to tell you how long I've been doing this. But when I was a young tennis professional, I worked at a very big facility in um, <coughs> Michigan. We had 14 indoor courts. And as the new member of the staff, the rookie on, on, the, on the staff, the low man on the totem pole, if you will, uh, I was given the privilege of running the Friday night mixer. Every Friday night, from September through May. Yay. I really wanted to be doing that as a young tennis professional. Well, my social life at that time consisted of all the people that I was working with on, on those Friday nights. And uh, I got to know, and I would make the best of it. And actually, looking back on it, I would say this, it was one of the best things that happened. I, I learned a ton. Um, but um, Friday nights were taken away, and so uh, I became friends with the staff, and one member in particular, our towel boy, became real good friends with him. He was a college tennis player, and he was working there at our club to make a little extra money. And so we decided that at the end of the night, we would uh, go hit some tennis balls, and we would play tennis. And we were pretty equal and pretty competitive, and so we started out and had a lot of fun, and we, we looked forward to our Friday night match. Um, the downside of that Friday night match was that I would start my Fridays at that club in the indoor business. You do this a lot um, at 7 o'clock in the morning with my lessons. So we were starting our matches at 11 o'clock at night. And usually one of us, and I won't say which one, was kind of cranky and ornery by that time and maybe not showing, displaying the best sportsmanship. <coughs> and so it got to be a little bit more work than it, should, than it was fun. And so we decided, the two of us, that we needed to have some sort of incentive that would change our attitudes about playing, because we wanted to play. And so we decided we're going to play for a new pair of socks. The loser had to buy the winner a new pair of socks. And so that worked, and it, we changed, it changed our attitudes of what we were, and, and how competitive we were. And the next day we'd go into the pro shop buy a new pair of socks, and after a while we, all, we had plenty of socks, and so we just started to have a tally. And we really had fun with that. I was at that club for five years, and my friend uh, stayed at the club, graduated from college, went on to be the, one of the te teaching professionals at that club, and I moved away, came back south, and, and um, he had Crohn's disease, and, which is a, a brutal thing, and through that he contracted leukemia. Um, and because of that he had to have a bone marrow transplant. Well, one of those is just brutal, but three of all three of the things that were really brutal. And so we certainly stayed in touch, and, and I followed his progression. I go see him in the hospital, and he lost it, at least a year and a half of his life in the hospital. But things started to go better for him. And when he called me, and I was out in the middle of nowhere one time, and he called me on my cell phone, and he called and said, hey, I just want to let you know, things aren't going so well. And the doctors have told me, you've got to put your affairs in order. And I'm going, well, that doesn't, that doesn't sound good. How to put your affairs in order. What does that mean? Well, it means they can't do anything for me anymore, and you know, my body's rejecting all the drugs, it's rejecting everything with the transplant. It's just not looking good. And so we talked for a little bit, and we reminisced for a little bit, and through the course of that, you know, he was discouraged, and he was tired, and he was uh, defeated, and so we were talking about our days of playing tennis and, and the new pair of socks, and all of a sudden I said, well, you know what you need is you need that, that new pair of socks that will change your attitude. And I hung up the phone and I thought, that's got to be the most lame advice anybody could give somebody. <laughs> <laughs> Called me the next day and said, I got a pair of white athletic socks hanging on my wall in the hospital room here. And the nurses don't understand why and I'm not telling them. But he said, when I get better, I'm going to see you and you're paying for them. And I went, great. <laughs> Now, he did. He defied the doctors. He, he's here with us today, and he's, he's doing well. Did the socks save his life? No. Did the socks change his life? Yeah, to, to a degree. Okay? Because it changed his attitude. And it gave him a purpose at that moment in time. 
And that's the word I want you to remember right now. Purpose. Okay? But it's about the attitude. As tennis professionals, we give advice all day long. And we give some interesting advice. We give some solid advice. And some of the advice that I have given over the years, or one bit of advice that I give, and I still give it to my students is, and this is particularly true for them in the summertime, in your tennis bag, you are to carry a new pair of socks, or at the very least, a clean pair of socks. When you split sets, you put those socks on. Now, what does that do for you? It helps you, it gives you a different view <coughs> about what's going to be happening in the next few minutes or in the next half hour or so as you play that third set. It changes your attitude a little bit. You have a vision as a tennis player of what's going to happen in that third set. You, you know what the outcome is, what you want it to be. But you're on a mission at that moment in time. And this helps you with your attitude towards that mission of playing in the heat, maybe playing a long protracted third set, whatever it may be. It helps. I've had more students come back and go, you know that really works. It made me feel better, it gave me a little bounce on my set. Well, that's not, that's kind of the point of it, but that's not really the point of it. The point of it is it helps you with your attitude going into that, that third set. But it, it helps you with your mission. Okay, so I want you to remember the word purpose, I want you to remember the word mission. And we talked just briefly about vision because that's where um, the outcome that you were hoping to have. As tennis pros, uh, we have three things that, I mean, we have a lot of different things that we can do and do well. Um, trying to uh, pursue uh, a, a new job or maybe improve the job we're on really starts with changing your attitude. The socks are kind of a for that. Okay? And the real, the real trick is to come up with the formula for what that will be for you to change your attitude on some of these things, or prepare you for the next step. And so the three words that I want to leave to talk with you about today are your purpose, your vision, and your mission. And I appreciate Pat uh, talking about the mission statement, because that's really what this is. <coughs> um, your purpose is who you are and why you're here. And you're thinking right now, oh my gosh, this is going to be philosophical, it's going to be abstract. No, when you discover what your purpose <coughs> is, it's concrete, it's clear. You'll know. It takes work to figure this out. And I can't tell you how you're going to do it exactly, but you have to sit down and make the effort to do it. But when you discover your purpose, <coughs> whether it's in your in life or it, it just for your occupation, it helps you change your attitude. It helps you then set a course for finding and casting your vision for yourself. <coughs> and that's what your vision is, what you want to accomplish. Where you want to be, where you want to do it. The mission is how you're going to accomplish that vision. It's your game plan. Um, I've had a lot of different, I've worked with a lot of different pros, and I've had, I'm going to give you an example of two pros that I worked with that had this, that figured this out. Basically, to me, your purpose, your vision, your mission are like the new pair of socks. When you put them on, it changes your attitude. It changes everything about the way you operate and the way you deal with circumstances and, that come your way in life. Uh, one tennis professional came to us and, and during the interview process he said, this is what I should be doing. He was very clear, this is what I do, this is what I should be doing, and he explained why, and he said, and this is where I want to be someday, this is where I want to go, this is the place that I want, this is what I want to accomplish. But, so he had his purpose and he had his vision, but he didn't have his mission, he couldn't figure that out yet. So he was with us for six years, and he did really well, and he uh, was popular, and he made a lot of money. And in the course of that time, he figured out his mission. And he left us, and he pursued his vision, his dream, and he started at rock bottom. He left a very successful position where he made a lot of money and started from scratch making no money. But he knew where he wanted to do it, he knew who he wanted to do it with, and he knew what he wanted to do. And his business has been successful, and has changed a little bit, but he has been very successful, and he's as happy as can be because he's pursuing and has pursued his dream. I had another tennis pro uh, that worked with us, and he was good. He was successful at our club. And he came in and he talked to me and he said, 
I'm unhappy. And I'm unhappy because I'm, I want to be here, and I don't seem to be able to get there. And maybe this isn't the right place for me. So now it's questioning his purpose. And we talked about it a little bit, and I said, well, that's, you know, for me it was disappointing because I thought that's where he belonged, but we decided he needed to take a little time, and so he took a long weekend. And when he came back, he came to me and said, okay, I want to talk to you again. And I said, great. And he said, this is where I belong. Okay? This is what I should be doing. And he knew what he was about at that moment. I don't know what he did on the long weekend. I got a little bit of an inkling, but he came back a different person. And he understood his purpose. And he said, this is where I want to go. And this is what I want to do. And this is, I want this position. I want to be able to do this. And he said, this is how I'm going to do it. I'm going to do this, 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 and this, and I'm going to improve this. And I went, hold the cow. This is fantastic. And it worked. He went from being on our staff, and when the position, the first position that came open for him to pursue where he wanted to, which was part of his vision, he went in and he sold himself on that with the decision makers because he was so clear as to what he was about and where he was going. He understood his purpose. Your both of them stay in town? No. no. One moved out. Not too far. One, they're both back in town. The same pro, um, the job changed with him in the middle of this. M management changed. Ownership changed. It got really difficult. And once again, he started contemplating, do I get out? Do I leave? Maybe this isn't the right place for me. And through a couple of conversations, he, and I knew what he was capable of, he, he did it again. He sat down and he said, okay, here's what I'm going to do. This is where I, where I belong. This is what I should be doing. And I have another vision. I have an ultimate vision of where I want to be. And so um, he changed and he changed his attitude. And at the same time, management seemed to change and ownership seemed to change. It's amazing how that all seems to work when your attitude changes. But his ultimate dream job became open. And he pursued that. And he had his purpose and he had his vision and pursuing that job, and he had his mission and how he was going to do it, and he did it. And he got that job, and he was so clear about how he was going to do it, it was fun to talk to him about that kind of stuff. I talked to the GM of that club that hired him afterwards, and, and the GM said, we had excellent candidates. Everybody was good. We were really happy with all of them. But this guy knocked it out of the park, and that's why he's in that position he's in today. Okay? Bottom line is, we tell people all the time, as tennis professionals, they walk out on the court and you say, okay, I'm going to work with you on your forehand, but you're giving them your purpose right there, okay? And you tell them, this is where I think, this is where I think you, how much you can improve and where you can be. There's your vision. And then you say, here's how we're going to do it, and we're going to go through these steps, and there's the mission, okay? But we rarely do it for ourselves. So, I like to talk to tennis pros, and I like to hear from them, and I talk to a lot of them. And uh, before you know, even putting this presentation together, and I ask them all the time, what's your dream job look like? And I get this answer. Well, uh, well, uh, I'd like to make a lot of money. Um, and there's a bunch of things. You hear people thinking through it, thinking out loud. And so after talking with them a little bit about that, I go, well, so what's your purpose? And they go, oh, now there's a good question. There's a really good question. Okay? And so I think we do ourselves a little bit of a disservice because we always do the same sort of thing for other people, but we're not doing it for ourselves. One of the, people, the, one of the groups of people that I really enjoy listening to are coaches from other sports. I love listening to them. I like studying them. I like hearing from them. I like uh, learning from them. And one of the things that I've observed, totally unscientific, but one of the things that I've observed is the coaches that have been very clear in their lives about who they are and what they want to do and how they're going to get there are still coaching today and generally in the same position. The coaches that seem to have pursued something because they wanted that position and have maybe grown into the job or were learning on the, on the job are the people that have jumped from place to place to place. And maybe eventually they slow down and they get to a place, but they, they weren't always clear about what they were doing. Um, very, very clearly, I'm just going to say this and, and then, then, we're, then we're done here for today, but I have, I'm going to leave you with a quote and a challenge. The quote's from Frederick Nietzsche, who said, and I'm going to make sure I got this right, because I don't want to screw it up, but 
To forget one's purpose is the commonest form of stupidity. Holy cow, that's harsh. That's really harsh when you think about it. What's scarier is that he's assuming we all understand our purpose. And if you don't, then that's a double push. Okay? The title of this presentation was, if you want to find your dream job, you've got to find a new pair of socks. The socks are basically the metaphor for changing your attitude. And this is the formula that I believe, and I'm going to suggest to you as a way to do it. So my challenge for you today is to sit down, put in your calendar a time when you can evaluate and think about, OK, I'm going to focus this amount of time on what, why am, what am I good at? What do I do? Why do people want to see me? Why do, what time do I solve? You ask yourself a bunch of questions. I don't have all the questions. Where everybody's going to come up with it differently. But when you, can, when you can come up with your, when you can discover your purpose, that's going to lead you to forming your vision. And it might be that your vision will be for your current job. It might be for another job. Could be, as I said before, something about being a better spouse. Could be being a better parent. It could be all kinds of things. You can apply this to lots of different places. We do it at our club for our tennis program. We have our purpose, our mission, and our vision. That's why none of our staff are here now, because they, they get tired of hearing about it, talking about it. <laughs> but I would challenge you to figure it out, to discover it, write it down, write down your purpose, write down your vision, and write down your mission, and memorize it and know it cold because it's going to serve you well. And if you're having trouble trying to even get started with that, go buy yourself a new pair of socks and put them on and maybe that'll help you change your attitude. <laughs> I'm done. Thank you very much. <laughs>